five weeks. I woke up one time before the time that I really woke up. And I talk about this extensively in the book because it was the worst point of my recovery. But I, I was... I was I had either come out of a brain surgery or was going into one and you know my parents were good until that point because they're thinking you know no matter what physically we can heal him Mm -hmm. we can be there for him we can get him back yeah but when I lost my mind and started hallucinating when they kind of brought me off the medication to see where I was mentally at do everything from crashing a plane into Turner Field, where I had grown up going to baseball games, giant spiders attacking my hospital room wall, the Taliban infiltrating the hospital, my dad, I I mean, and all this stuff is just as real as us sitting here and me touching this table. I thought, like, because, you know, young Lance Corporal, especially in my disoriented, banged up state, like, we don't really know there's military medicine to begin with. You know, we know the doc and the corpsman. And maybe like the battalion surgeon. But I didn't know there was a Walter Reed. I didn't know there was some of the best doctors in the whole world that were going to save my life wearing camis. Right. And not white doctor coats, which I had always known. So I was so disoriented. But in my banged up medicated state when they brought me out of this and I had these hallucinations. You know, with not knowing about military health care. You know, I didn't know if my parents were having to pay for everything. And so I was so worried, even though I was on a trach, something was breathing for me, I had a million tubes everywhere, and I couldn't express anything or do anything. I was so worried that my parents, you know, I hallucinated that they sold their home, all the cars, they got rid of everything, and they just, like, couldn't pay for anything anymore. Mm. And so my dad, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie John Q, but, like, my dad, in an attempt to save me and get what I needed, I'm laying in the bed, and when I really woke up, it was crazy because the room that I was actually in looked nothing like the room that I was manifesting in my hallucinations. Oh, really? But I remember looking over, and my dad was coming through with just a look of despair and anger on his face, charging through the sliding doors of the ER with shotgun in hand demanding that I get this life-saving surgery that I needed. And the SWAT came in and blew him to a million pieces right there in front of me. I even heard, they were so real, I even heard the oh shotgun like clink against the floor when, when they shot him and he fell. And like just, just so bizarre stuff like that. But the one that pretty much the only point that I really got choked up writing the book and that was really hard for me to write and I still get emotional talking about it right now is one of the hallucinations I had um, I was standing on this hill and there was like a massive field around me and I could see down into this valley and there was a funeral going on and all you could see was like the 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 burial hole and then the, the preacher or the, the the religious person you know reading out of the bible and performing this funeral with no one there but him and I couldn't move my feet were stuck and I was just watching and like the sky was super gray it was just super eerie really eerie you couldn't see anything there wasn't trees or anything for miles just this field and there was one big tree right behind me so I'm looking and watching and thinking, like, what am I doing here? You know, like, what is this? And I finally realized that um, it was my funeral. And I was watching my own funeral, and no one came. And none of my buddies came because they were so mad at me and disappointed that I left them early in Afghanistan. But as hard as that was, I'm so thankful for it. And sorry, I know I'm going off on a little tangent, but no, this is that, important. That is a is a lesson that's always stuck with me, you know, even though I had no control over that and I know that was, you know, completely just a hallucination. You know, what are you doing day to day and throughout your life to make an impact, to love and to take care of others? So, you know, pretty much like I viewed that as as 
a, a very difficult lesson on, you know, what do I want my legacy to be? Mm. So, um, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, hopefully someone shows up at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> you might have a couple people but, there. Uh, <laughs> no, man, I just, I want to strive every day to be a good person, to impact people and help people in a positive way. And, you know, when I'm gone, for people to miss me. And I think ultimately just look at my life and hopefully learn from it and them think, you know, that was a life well lived.